I make art because I still don't know who the hell I really, really am. So I reach for truth, and I don't always know how to clean my mind all the time, but I want the painting to be as honest about what people are, what we feel, and there is a, a humanity to be investigated. And the best way I can do that is trying to be as honest with myself as I possibly can be in, in any painting. And so I managed to have a hyphenated life for a long time. I was a husband painter, I was a father painter, I was a designer painter, I was a teacher painter, and screw them all. And for the last batch of years, I'm a painter painter. I don't want to illustrate an emotion. I want to evoke enough emotion so that somebody can identify with it and carry it from there. It doesn't happen often, but I can have a painting of mine around and sometimes I, I'm over, really overwhelmed with grief. You ask a very provocative question when you say, what does New York mean to me? One here, bred here, I think it became and remains a place in which all my stereotypes are challenged. I've learned that not everybody is uh, a Jew born to immigrant parents. I've learned that there are dreadful misconceptions by my standards, and how do I tolerate them? Where can I voice them, like morality and religion? Anything that I have that locks itself up gets unlocked in New York. Because of the immigrant background, my whole job was to learn how to be an American. How to be an American man, by my standards, it was not the same as how to be an American man by standards that I accepted. They were in conflict. My idea is trying to be a unique person was the only way in which I could allow myself to consider uh, some sense of personal success. When I look at my own work, uh, I try to see me. And what do I think other people see when they look at a work? Viewing a work of art is an exciting, an exciting thing. One of the most exciting things that could happen to people. The Whitney it was the place in which I could feel very comfortable about being in a protected atmosphere. I would meet my friends there, I would go through the Whitney, it was a part of me that identified me. Nothing bad was gonna happen to me at the Whitney. For me, this, this was my main street. This is my refuge when it rained because I could get out of the weather or if we we're gonna be meeting somebody, this was the place where we could do it. It is not at all like I remember it. Uh, I don't, I don't remember it as having a sense of dignity more than grandeur. Ah, got one that works. It's so funny that I remember nothing about stairs. I used to do these two at a time if they were here, and I would never remember that I felt like I was climbing the Alps. Ah! Some thoughts about this place are very new. It would never have occurred to me when it was the museum. I would love this as a studio. I didn't think of it as a place where art would be made. It was only a place where art would be displayed. So it has such a different feeling. And part of me wants to rip down these cheap rock walls and see about the walls underneath it. They may, they may have forgotten that, that there was some painting there of a, a, a nude with a, with, with a stag, you know, looking out into the world, because that's the kind of art I remember uh, from the Whitney. I'm going into this strange place. Oh my, I want this. 
I like the tall ceilings, the wild fireplace. My whole sense of the building is kind of the sense of what was happening in terms of the, the art, the New York art world. This is where real writers were. This is where real actors were. This is where real painters probably. Uh, so I was the callow youth personified, except I would never dare identify myself that way at, at the time. Perhaps the best answer to uh, who I was at a point when my wife and I were uh, in counseling together, marriage counseling, having some difficulties uh, after, after a number of years of marriage. And uh, the therapist uh, said, you might just as well face it. Painting is his mistress. He is escaping from you and stop denying it. My escape was in painting. That's where I could really be happy by myself. and mountains and mountains of work all over the place. I've had 40 years in which to do it. And now I still feel that I'm running out of time. No matter what happens, I'm running out of time. I'm an old man. I, I'm, I am in my 92nd year. I don't know that people are supposed to live that long, let alone keep painting. The new and the old, the new and the old are just so beautifully seen together. And the old is not without hope. Like, what will that abandoned building become? I want it to become my studio, but what will the abandoned building truly become? <laughs> my boy, my grandson, this is him. This is, this is the one. My hope for the future is right here. things. I am funny. I am, I am ri ridiculous. I'm not sane. It's not, not even funny smart. It's just funny that we live with all these cross current of thought. My generalized me, I had no respect for. My specific me, as somebody who was doing something that's socially respectable, which is painting, but didn't mean to have to craft it to make socially accepted images. A need for approval and affirmation can be so strong that we accept that by people who know far less than we do. The painting is a great catalyst or seeing something as it actually is, no matter how different it may look when I go back and look at it. It's not the painting that has changed, it's me that has changed. Thank you.